like it's crazy, we have the joy of the Lord that lives inside of us, and that is our true strength. And that's what we're going to celebrate today. He keeps us steady. He keeps us strong. He keeps us non-wavering. And um, if you don't have that joy today, we pray that you would feel his joy in the presence of the Lord today in his house. Let's just stand. Lord, we thank you and we worship you today. We thank you that wherever we are, whatever we're going through, we can tap into the unending well of your joy and your presence to get us through, Lord, to keep us strong, to keep us happy, to keep us in a right frame of mind, Lord. And we thank you for that and we celebrate that today among your people in this beautiful faith family. We thank you for the joy of the Lord. Amen.
Independence Day week of celebration. Many of us are traveling, but uh, I'm glad you decided to come into the House of Lord today. I see a lot of orange out there. That's a lot of fun for Teresa and I to look out and see those things happening out there. If you didn't today, don't worry about that at all. It's just a lot of fun. It's something we're doing for fun for the summer. And if you're a guest with us today, we want to welcome you to the House of the Lord. God knew from the beginning of time you would decide to come here today. We welcome you. We're glad you're here and made a decision. I'm glad all of you made a decision, either in this house to be here or tuning in by Facebook Live or later in the week. Many people watch us later in the week and they attend their own churches faithfully. But I'm thankful that God has a plan for today. How about you? He's got a plan. He's got an idea that he wants all of us to get on the same page with him. He's got something he wants us to know from his word. He wants to receive our praises, which we're about to do that some more. And also, he wants to give us peace. Jesus spoke to his disciples when he left this world, peace be with you. And so I'm just sitting there, I'm, I'm trying to deprogram my week. I know some of you have probably had a very busy week and a very hectic week too. And as I'm opening up in that first song, I'm just trying to get those things cluttered out of my mind and trying to get my mind and my heart around what God wants to do. And what I know God wants to do today is allow you and I to come into a sense of peace. That we know that it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. That we know that it is good to gather together. We at Destiny Church are a family, right? That's what our mission statement that God gave us is. Mission statement is we are a family of believers loving God and His creation, learning to be followers of Christ through God's holy word and living out our divine destiny through the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're loving, we're learning, and we're living. But we can't do that if we don't have peace. So today, I think that's the word God wants us to have during this praise and worship set. So would you just do this with me in your own way? You can remain seated or you can stand. But I just want you to get your mind and your heart settled, okay? Let's do that right now and ask the Lord to help us do that. Father, I just pray for peace today for those that are troubled. Pray for comfort for those that are grieving. I pray, Lord, for strength for those that are weak. Pray for those that may be anxious, Lord, that you would calm every fear. And Lord, I desire to know that I've been in your presence today, Lord. I know it's here, but I want to tap into it. I want to tap into your love and your grace and your strength and your mercy. Lord, I want to see forgiveness in the house. I want to see you deliver people that are in this place. I want to see you heal the sick today, God. I want to see you allow us to know that it is good to be in your presence and I know to do that, I've got to get all these other things out of my mind and out of my heart and simply begin to focus on you, who you are, who you will always be, that I know, God, that you gave your life for me, that you gave your life for this world so we can encounter you in a worship setting like this. So, Lord, as we continue to worship you today, may you receive our praise and may we know that we have been with you in Jesus' name. Amen, church? Amen. Let's stand and continue to worship today.
you are forever our God. And you are trustworthy. So sweet. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to
Hallelujah. Who's got your Bible in the house this morning? Raise it up high. Who's got it? Let me see it. Let me see it. Bring it, bring, Brian, bring it up right there. Bring it yours, Brian. Everything in this book, from cover to cover, is what we believe in this church. And everything in this book, from cover to cover, is going to come to pass. The sea is going to roll, the sky is going to roll back like the sea, like a scroll, and Jesus is going to come, and He's going to deliver all of us out of this world and in to be with Him forever. He's going to come back and reign a thousand years. We're going to come with Him. All the promises in this book are yes and amen. Let it be done. And so when we're singing those things today, I want you to receive the promises that are in this book. Receive the promises that are in your life. I hear you singing. I love to hear you shout, let it be done. Because why? Because we as a church body are surrendering to God's will over our own. Over our will, over our own ambitions, over our own trials, over our own tribulations. You're listening in today. You're a guest in this house. Surrender is the victory and the freedom that you will receive. If you surrender to Jesus, you will find freedom from your suffering, freedom from your pain. Why? Because your heart will belong to Him. So today, Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you may be trying, you may not know the Lord this way. You may not understand what's happening in this house right now because His love is saturating this place. You may not understand what's going on even watching. Why? You just may have run across this, but you can't take your eyes off of it. It's God's love. He's drawing out to you. He's reaching through you, wanting to get your heart, wanting to heal you, to save you, to deliver you from your own sin. Amen? So as we sing again, let's receive the promises that are in this book, the promises He has for this church, the promises He has for you and for me, and most importantly, let's give our hearts to Him. Amen? Let's sing it together. Like a flood. Come to us. Let it be done. 
give one of his daughters some joy today. Just receive that, let it flood your soul. When I said sister, and I said daughter, something left inside of you, that's you. Receive the joy of the Lord today. Those that are dry, those that are hurting, those that are broken, receive the peace of the Lord. Get yourself in a posture of to receive, whether you open up the palms of your hands or whether you just in your spirit are opening yourself up to receive what God has for you. And receive the peace of the Lord today. And receive the love of the Lord today. Someone else needs to go ahead and whisper out loud. Nobody's going to judge you around here. If you're in your home, just go ahead and shout it out. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. You need to speak some truth into your life today and let yourself be reminded of God loves you. And lastly today, I want us to just remind ourselves of all of us that we are blessed. To say that I am blessed. One more time. I am blessed. One more time. I am blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I pray right now on this morning, Lord, there's people that are receiving you and receiving your love. And I just want to give them a minute to do that. So church, let's just remain in a, in a posture of just waiting before the Lord right now. And just, just let's just be silent before Him. And let's just receive the peace that is in this house. It's saturating this place right now. If you're listening in, just go ahead in your own way to receive it as well. Let's just take a moment. Thank you for those that have a heart to give up to you and give it to your 
house. Lord, you know the needs that we have as a church. You know the vision you're giving us. You know the things that we need in this facility to just continue to grow it and move it into the vision that you've given us. So Lord, we just ask for those to come into the offering boxes today as well. That we would be blessed and multiplied by your supernatural faith. And also, God, I pray for our children today to learn about you on their level. I pray that none would leave here without knowing you. If they learn about Joseph, we pray for their leaders. Pray for them to have a spirit of attentiveness. And I pray for our brief fellowship to be sweet as we greet one another and prepare our hearts for a few announcements in the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's greet one another very quickly and we'll get just a couple announcements to you. We'll get our hearts ready for the Lord. Good job, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who is helping on Wednesday night. 
Um, we have different people come in every Wednesday night, but they are faithful when they get here, and they are got such a great attitude and spirit, and we thank you so much for that. If you would like to, um, we've got a whole summer left, so if you would like to jump in there and help us, I promise you there is a place for you. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer if you would like to sign your name and phone number so our children's pastor, Samuel and Lancy Chambliss, can get in touch with you. Or if you would just like to speak to them, um, once again, we thank you so much for um, being involved in our VBS program where our children are not only hearing the Word of God, they're hearing about the love of God and they're seeing the love of God through you and your dedication to serving Him and serving them. And so we thank you for that. Um, this Wednesday night, uh, we are going to have a 4th of July celebration. The number one reason that we're having this is because Pastor Don wanted homemade ice cream. So I'm going to be making some homemade ice cream. Um, we don't have any family here, so these kind of holidays for us, a lot of times we just sit at home by ourselves um, when all the families, and I'm not trying to make you feel sorry for us, but we're just kind of all of our families in North Mississippi. So um, we uh, wanted to have a 4th of July celebration, so it may just be me and you and Hunter, honey, and, and that'll be okay. We'll eat some homemade ice cream in the back. Yeah, we'll, we'll have fun. But if you would like to come celebrate with us, we're doing picnic-style food. Um, please bring some drinks. And if you make homemade ice cream, please make us some homemade ice cream. We would love to have it. All that kicks off at 7 o'clock. So if you're going to be making ice cream, you may want to get here um, a little bit early. and Or if you're bringing it, I know you have to cover that up to keep it um, nice and frozen. So um, we'll have the doors open probably about 5 o'clock. Um, to receive and to be setting up and that kind of thing. So we look forward to celebrating our freedom with our faith family. One more announcement. Uh, the following Wednesday night on July 11th, Pastor Don is going to be starting a new teaching on prayer. It's um, about a, a book called The Circle Maker, but it's actually the study of that book called Draw the Circle. And he's going to start that on July the 11th. And if you would like the book that accompanies that teaching, they're $10 each, and we'll be glad to order that for you. You can pay for those either through the offering boxes or through the Destiny Church app, which is very convenient, and, uh, or, and sign the sign-up sheet out in the foyer. That way we know who is actually ordering, um, just so we can cover all of our bases. Um, we appreciate that so much. Um, remember, we do online giving um, just for your convenience. We have a wonderful prayer discipleship team that is available to pray with you when this Christmas is over. And we just love you guys. We are so thankful for you. Thankful for our Destiny Church faith family. The $10 book that you can order if you so desire, you can order the book too. I think it's about the same amount of money. It's, the book is called The Circle Maker. And the journal, which is a 40 day prayer journal, is called Draw the Circle. And that's what I'm wanting to take us through for 40 days, starting not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. So the cheapest I could find them is $10, but we want to get those for you if that's an inconvenience. So we're just going to order them in bulk and see if we can get a little cheaper rate. But like she said, you can go on to our uh, online giving app and uh, find the Circle Maker on there and just put that. We'll already have your name. And You'll already have paid. You can get the book too. You can order a set this week. We'll order some the next week. Or you can just go out and order and sign that. We'll just get the book so you can pay when you get the book. But it's basically our cost. We're just trying to make it convenient for you in case you forget after you think about it today or later in the week. You can go online and do that. Uh, or text us. You can probably do that. But I'd rather you sign the sheet so that it gets to where it needs to be. But I'm excited about what God wants to take us through. 40 days of prayer heading into September, October, November, December. The last four months of the year will be significant for us as a church. I want to spray it up and ready as we go into that. And the summer's been significant, and I'm excited about the series again today. Are you learning a little bit about colors and what things are about and what they look like in the Bible? I, I enjoy this. I, I think it's a lot of fun for me. I, like I said, I did it about six years ago. I couldn't find those notes. So all this is new to me as I'm studying again today. But today is orange. Next week is blue. I'm looking forward to talking to you a little bit about that color, but I need your prayers today. So would you just stretch your hands this way and pray for me? Lord, I just need your strength and I need your grace today. I need your love to, to fill me full of joy. And God, I desire to do this simply just what you want me to do. I am a servant of yours and I've always done my best to do 
deliver things the way you want them delivered. Lord, I, I just pray that that would happen today, that, that they would not see me, but they would hear you. And that I in, decrease as you increase in my life. And God, I just pray today that there would be no one leave here or that would hear this now or later that would leave bound as they were. Let us all see the things that so easily entangle us, the things that are holding us back, and allow freedom and deliverance to come into the house today and into the homes of those that hear this today and later in the week. In the strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are talking about the life of Joseph. We're talking about kind of how God used his life as an example for all of us. He had a colorful life. We, most of us know Joseph for his coat of many colors. And so our kids are learning about that too. You just heard that. And I would love for you guys to maybe make it a point to have some discussions around the living room or your dinner table in the evenings to be able to, to kind of have some time when you're discussing that together. We would like for, for you guys to discuss those things as family. That's why we try through seasons to have the, t the kids learning the same thing that you guys are as adults. And, so while they're not learning specifically about colors, they are learning the life and the story of Joseph. And for me, the story of Joseph is a, a story of perseverance. It's a story of building character. It's a story of deliverance, which we'll get into today. God delivered his entire people through Joseph. And while his life would not have been any life that any of us would have signed up for, God pulled things out of him that he didn't even know was that were in him. God used his life to create a beautiful masterpiece. He does the same with us. He pulls things out of us if we allow him to that we don't even know that we have in us. Give things he gives us at times. But more importantly, he builds character in us and he builds consistency and perseverance. And so we're learning from that in this life and learning how God can create that masterpiece in us. We've been taking a color a week. And uh, today's color is orange. We've looked at red and we've looked at yellow. Real quickly, red for the purpose of today primarily represents grace. The blood of Christ, the redemption that we have. Also, yellow, we learned last week, represents anointing or favor, the glory of the Lord. And so we know that yellow and red make orange. And so today we're going to look at the favor of God and the grace of God coming together and igniting a flame inside of us. And that is the biblical meaning of orange. The prevalent biblical meaning of orange is uh, a flame. Basically, that arms, the favor, and the grace come together and they build this eternal flame. Uh, Paul said to uh, Timothy, fan into flame the gift that I was given to you through the laying on of my hands. Also, orange represents, basically uh, in the Bible, it represents a harvest. We know that orange is around the fall. It's a harvest color. Uh, also, it represents deliverance and also strength or courage. Also in the world, orange means fall. It, we know that for Halloween a lot of times. While orange does not have a spiritual negative a part of it, it's just that Halloween we have pumpkins and orange is associated with the pumpkins. So there's no negative spiritual meaning to orange in terms of Halloween, but it is used a lot in Halloween colors. It also means determination in our society and ambition. Also, prison uniforms are mostly orange in color. You yeah, haven't thought about that lately. And which leads me to my next point. Orange is primarily used in our society to draw attention. So while the prisoners not, would not want to draw attention to themselves, if they escape, you can see them in the bright orange. And believe it or not, that's the reason. So universally across the world, they're in bright orange so you don't lose track of them. Also, those who have a, maybe an orange car, which I would love to have a Dodge Challenger. Let's move on. Cones in the road are to draw attention. To draw attention to the cones in the road to get your eye to look at that. We learned last week that yellow is the most identifiable color of the human eye. So orange has that yellow in it already. And until the mid-1400s, orange was known in Europe as yellow-red. Orange is the only color that is named after a fruit. All the other fruits get their names from colors, but orange was named after the fruit orange once it was discovered by the Europeans. So orange is a color that draws attention to itself. You have opinions about orange most of the time. Whether it is good or bad, you have an opinion if something is bright orange. And speaking of fruit today, that's what we're going to be looking at. We're 
we're going to be looking at the fruit in Joseph's life. And we're going to look at some of the things I just mentioned. Harvest, strength, we're going to look at deliverance today, and we're going to look at fruit. We're going to look at how God took Joseph from faithful to fruitful. And that's really his plan for all of us, is to produce fruit in our lives. And not only fruit in salvation, because we know that the Bible talks about that, but we're, we're men and placed on this earth once we know Jesus Christ to produce fruit of salvation. Jesus told Peter he was going to make him fishers of men. But today I want to focus more on the fruit of the Spirit that's mentioned in Galatians 5. The fruit that is born out of our relationship with God. The fruit that is born out of character in us. And that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if you've been with me for any length of time, you know I say this often, but it is so true that gifts are given by God. God can empower and gift us with anything we need at any moment in time. But fruit is born through our relationship with God. Fruit is something that takes time to cultivate. We're not faithful by nature. We're not gentle by nature. This flesh that we have, this fallen form that we're in, that needs a Savior, needs redemption, needs God, and needs His Holy Spirit in us to provide unconditional love, to be patient. And so those are things that I want to look at today that God brought out of Joseph's life through his, his incarceration, through his trials, through his tribulations. And through that, there was perseverance, there was consistency, and most of all, there was character. But Satan knows this all too well as well, and he does everything he can to keep us from producing the fruit that God has called us to. And one of those main ways that he keeps us from producing fruit, or tries to keep us from producing fruit, is through temptation. And that's what we're going to look at today. So we're not going to go back to our 1 Peter 5.10 uh, translation today, or, or verse today. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 10, 12 and 13. To look at what temptation is and what God does with temptation. So this is 1 Corinthians 10, 12 and 13. I'm reading New Living Translation for this particular passage. It says, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. I'd like to read that again if you would grace me with that. If you, are think, if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. No different. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Amen to the Word of God today. So we know that God is faithful. There it is. It's so many times in the Scripture. But here it is, even in the form of temptation. We know that God allows us to go through some things, to produce some things out of us that we don't even realize we have, and also to create this masterpiece of fruit, also so that people will be drawn to the freedom in our lives, partake of that fruit, and maybe come to know Him. And one of the main ways that the enemy tries to take it out is through temptation. So we're going to look at that temptation in the life of Joseph today, how he faced this plan of the enemy, and how God took him from faithful to fruitful. So let's pick up our story. Let me give you a quick background for those of you who may not have been with us last week. Joseph, as I said, was known for his coat of many colors. His father gave him that coat because he was faithful, because he was doing the right things. His brothers were angry at him because he had told them some things that they had done. And so they began to despise the favor in Joseph, even hate him. And they ripped that coat off of him. They caught him in the field, ripped that coat off, threw him in a pit and wound up selling him to some slave traders that were Ishmaelites, ripped his coat, dipped it in goat's blood and convinced his father that a wild beast had destroyed him. And so the second week we looked at what happened with Joseph in slavery, that he was sold to Potiphar, one that was over the bodyguard in Egypt. And so Joseph could have just wallowed in his misery and his newfound slavery but we know that he prospered, that he took his lemons of life and made lemonade with them. That's what we looked at last week. We didn't get that. Go back and look at that. And so we find him today prospering. We left off in Genesis 39, 6 last week that whatever Joseph put his hands to was prospering. 
And also, there was no one he answered to in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar was the only one he answered to. It was Potiphar and Joseph in charge of everything. And the Bible says that some time goes by between his favor and his uh, doing well in the house. And then Satan comes from another angle. And we're going to look at 6 through 23. And again, since we're taking the story, this is a lot of scripture to read. But I hope you'll bear with me as we go through it today. So we're going to look at 39, 6 feet, the second half of 39, where we left off last week, all the way through verse 23. So let's go through it. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in the house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? And she spoke to Joseph day after day. He did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the household was there inside. She caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and had fled outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, See, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to make sport of us. He came into me to lie with me, and I screamed. When he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled and went outside. So she left his garment beside her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with these words, The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came into me to make sport of me. And as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Now when his master heard these words of his wife, which she spoke to him, saying, This is what your slave did to me, his anger burned. So Joseph's master took him and put him into jail, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in jail. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's charge all, charge all the prisoners who were in the jail so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made him to prosper. Amen to the word today. So we're going to look at Joseph who just can't seem to hang on to any coat he can. He lost two already in this story. So we're going to look at how God led him from faithful to fruitful. We're going to look at temptation. We're going to look at destination. And we're going to look at dedication. Very brief. So let's look at temptation. This is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Satan always has a plan to ruin our fruit. And that's through temptation, through tempting us. That plan is now in full attack mode with Joseph. Joseph has conquered the temptation to be bitter instead of better. He's prospered greatly. There's nothing in the house that he's not over. Think about it. He's about probably 19 by now, maybe 2021. 20, I mean, this is a huge house. This is not some little house on the side of town. This is the captain of the bodyguard. He has Pharaoh's ear. He has the one that does all the executions. And the Bible said last week that Joseph is not only over everything in the house, but he's also everything out in the field. So Joseph is doing well. But now temptation comes from another angle because Satan wants to destroy God's people. And he knows now that Joseph is the key to saving God's people. But this one's more subtle because it comes in his success. It comes while he's in victory mode. Yes, he's still a slave, but you know he's doing better than he ever thought he was when he got pulled out of it. And so that's what happens sometimes for us if we're not careful the sin and the temptation that comes and presents itself to us in good times, we're more susceptible to that sometimes than we are in the bad. That's not to say that we are, but there is another means of temptation that comes when God is blessing us. When God is doing things in our lives that we want Him to. Why? Because we become more dependent on ourselves and less dependent on God. We tend to grow away from Him because we're comfortable in our life. We're comfortable in this world. 
And that is why I get so aggravated in talking about the gospel that says we get everything that we want and the gospel that says that we're just going to be okay and we're never going to have hardship, we're never going to be sick, we're never going to have trials and tribulations because that puts us in a place that we think we don't need God. That puts us in a place that I can tell God what to do and He'll just do it. I can decree it, declare it, justify it, ratify it, whatever. If I, if I do the recipe, then God's going to give me this. If I do A, B, C, and D, that sounds a lot like brooding over a witchcraft pot, doesn't it? Okay. I knew that. Let me get back over here. <laughs> so, what God wants us to see, if this world were perfect, would we ever want to leave it? Would we ever want and, and pine away and desire that heaven, that heavenly home? That we get to go to in that heaven that's going to come down to earth and set things right the way that it always should be. If I face some trials and tribulations, then that makes me dependent on God. But when God begins to bless me, I'm in danger. I'm in danger of not desiring Him as much as I did because my needs are met. And I can become lukewarm. I can become complacent. I can become happy with what I have. <laughs> And even not happy with what I have because my basic needs are met. What we read that the words of Paul ring in my spirit today, personally for me. If you think you're strong, you better be careful. If you think you're strong, if you think you've got this figured out, be careful. You're about to fall. What? Pride goes before the fall. So we can be tempted not to rely on God as much to allow our chains of season to distract us from the relationship. One of the things I've seen so many times now in pastoring about nine years is, is or eight years I should say, is that when the blessing, when people get blessed by God and they turn their lives around, sometimes I don't see them anymore. They, they get blessed and they go out. I'll see them again when things aren't going as well. But they don't tend to keep relationship. They tend to be like a toddler and want things and want to get out. And I, I was that way too. Lord, if you'll just get me out of this, I'll never do it again. No one I just wanted out of the trouble. I didn't want relationship. I wanted reward. I wanted the blessings and I really didn't want relationship with the blessing. And so it's important that we keep that relationship. It's important because that's just going to keep God is going to continue to find a way to draw us back to Him. So I don't want Him to have to do that through causing troubles in my life or allowing me to go through troubles just so I can get back. And also, when we are down, we can get caught up in justification. You know, Joseph could have said to, to God, well, you know, God, I never wanted to be in this land. And you know the morals of this land. You know that all of the lives of the Egyptians are loose. And so I'm in a what culture that you placed me in, not you. I didn't want to be here, but... So what am I supposed to do, Lord? You know that she's already been with these other servants. And you know that as a slave, I'm never going to have those pleasures. See the justification we can do very quickly. See how those things can happen. If we're not careful, we can justify some very grave sins. And it never happens that day that the thought comes into your mind. Very, very little does that happen. But it's a slow fade, the Crafty Crown song says. It's just over and over and over listening to songs that talk about doing things that we shouldn't do. Somebody should leave. You need the kids. They need me. That's real. Singing that. This little rock, I think I'm going to have to slip you off. You don't think those things matter, but they do. Those things get planted in your head. Those seeds get there in your mind. And the next thing you know, you're trying to justify things. And that's a, that's a temptation that the enemy wants to take to steal your fruit. Also, John 2.16, 1 John, I'm sorry, 2.16 says, The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life is how all sin comes into, into our lives. So I see something with my eyes. Think about this with Eve. She saw the forbidden fruit. She saw that it was pleasing to the eye, Genesis says. Then the lust of the flesh. She saw that it was good to eat. And she had already heard from Satan, the serpent, that if she partook of it, she would know as much as God. The pride of life. 
She felt that God was withholding something from her that she really needed and deserved. And therefore, that justification caused her to take the fruit. And that is the process that he takes us through, Satan, when he's trying to get us to sin. He lets us see something with our eyes. We desire it with our flesh. And the next thing you know, our pride that we have in ourselves will allow us to justify doing something that we normally wouldn't do. We know that it entraps us like a spider web, that it always takes us further than we want to go, and it's going to hold us longer than we want to stay. Joseph could have made these choices, but he didn't. Notice what he says. I have the trust of my master. There is nothing he doesn't allow me to have but you. And what you're asking me to do is a sin, what did he say? Against God. Think about what God has allowed Joseph to go through. Think about what Joseph could have thought of God. But yet he said, no, I can't do that. You know why? Because I've had a dream, he says in his heart. I've had a dream and I know that God is going to do this in my life. That won't happen for you and for me if we don't have a relationship with God. If I'm not talking to him every day, he's not reminding me of the things he said to me. He's not letting me know that I know you don't understand this, but you've got to trust me. You've got to see this through. And what you're asking me to do is a sin against God. We know that the, the Jewish culture, we know that this word of God that we confess says a sexual sin is a sin against yourself and God. He remembered the grace that had been given, the favor that was bestowed on him, and used that to summon up the flame of strength needed to resist the flesh. So the orange and the yellow, I mean the red and the yellow make the orange. But the Bible says that she continues day after day. Joey! Joey! I dropped something. Come! Come to my bedroom! Won't you just lie beside me? Did you catch that in the scripture? Just come over here and lay. We won't do nothing. Hard to remain faithful when you flirt. You listen. Don't friend that old girlfriend on Facebook. Just don't do it. <laughs> Why play with fire? You're going to get burned. It's going to happen. And I'm looking, but I'm not looking at you. I should. But that's how it starts. Oh, this ain't nothing. It's just the Victoria's Secret commercials. It's fine. You know, it's on regular TV. And the next thing you know, where does our mind go from? What do we put ourselves in scenarios from there? Joey, come on. Ring in the bell. Joey, 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 come here. Day after day after day. We're not going to do anything. Just come here and lay beside. Mm. Man, those are trouble, trouble waters. Day after day after day. He was able to resist. Why? Because he had a relationship with God. And, believe it or not, God remained faithful to Joseph. It may not look like it when we first look at this and what happened to him, but I sure you did. Because so let's look at our destination here. She had every intention to bring him to her bedroom. But he had every intention not to. And so when she finally decided, I'm going to take this to another level. When she decided, I'm just going to grab the boy, and he ain't going to resist me when I grab him. He took off, left his coat, and said, I am out of here. Ran out of the house. So let's look at destination together. What did we say a while ago? In the scriptures, Paul told the church of Corinth who really struggled with their sensuality, who struggled with their indulgence and their sin. Notice how the gifts of God and the sensuality of our flesh get so mixed together. The church of Corinth gave us all these great scriptures about the gifts of God and all these things. But also they were dabbling in other things because they were sensual by nature. So we've got to be careful with that. The enemy can use that to cause us to sin. But God already has our escape route planned out before the temptation ever comes. Did you hear that? He's already got your escape route planned out. The question is, are we going to take it? It's not a matter of will. There will be a way out. There's going to be a way out. The issue lies with making sure I stay spiritually strong enough that I can take the exit when it comes. Now the Bible says in the book of James that if I will resist the devil, he will flee from me. But there are times where I'm put in situations where 
I'm bound by circumstance to be where I'm at. But I can resist that because God is going to allow me a way out. My destination is determined long before I'm in the heat of the battle. Did you hear that? The destination is determined long before you're in the heat of the battle. Do not, do not blame God for something you're not willing to give up. Don't do that. It's not a devil problem, it's a flesh problem. It's hard to say that you're going to keep your chastity when you're already in the back seat. Well, we weren't going to do nothing. What, what did he do? What did she do? It's the same way today. I realize this is awkward. I'm moving on. But having the packs of cigarettes, if you really want to quit, and I'm not going to get into that. I'm just using this as an example. It's a habit. Having that pack in the truck, saying you're going to quit, are you really going to quit, quit with that pack in the truck? I did something for 21 years. I know what I thought. Oh, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to get this whole roll and I'll be done. I'm going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go. It's important to realize that the path of deliverance is already laid out for everyone. If you've got something that you're doing that you really want to stop doing, that you know is hindering you from your destiny in this house or out there, God has a way and today is your day of deliverance. If you want it to be, today is your day of deliverance. The cross has already done everything that we needed to do. And so in times of relief or victory, we're inclined, if we're not careful, to just hang out spiritually. And to just kind of be comfortable with where we are. To not pursue as hard as we were. Because the destination for the way out is always toward God. I've got to be pursuing God because... The oppression is less doesn't mean I don't need to stop praying as much. Many of good children have fallen prey to temptation due to an idle mind, prosperity, or simple compromise. Just saying that, you know what, I'm just, just going to do a little dab here. It's going to be all right. I can quit anytime I want to. All those things that we know we've heard. Joseph could have said, I'm not going to go lie with her, but I might flirt with her. As I said before, it's hard to be faithful while you're how many have lost their way because they took their eyes off the destination? They got their eyes on something else. And they've settled for where they are. I believe that Joseph never felt that he would remain in his current condition. I didn't think, and I don't think for a minute, that Joseph thought that the head of Potiphar's house was the apex of what his dreams were that he saw. I believe that every day that God got to him and he was talking to him saying, Joseph, I know you don't understand, but you're going to have to trust me. What I've told you is true. You're going to have to trust me. If he's not having that relationship, if he's not trusting God, then all of a sudden he's going to fall prey to something else. And he's going to settle for counterfeit dreams rather than real dreams. And that in due time, the dreams that God placed in his heart were going to come true. Therefore, every day his focus was headed toward his dreams, headed toward the God who gave it to him. He kept the red grace of God and the yellow favor of God ablaze in his heart. And that allowed him to be strong enough to make the way of escape when it was presented to him, even if it did cost him another coat. But we know that Satan didn't give up on Joseph's reign, right? He was dedicated and determined to keep Joseph from being the fruitful bearer that God intended for him to be. So let's look at dedication quickly. Make no mistake, Satan is greatly dedicated to ruining your fruit. He wants to ruin our crops and make our baskets empty. So if he can't get away with it one way, he'll try another. So when he sees he can't tempt Joseph, he actually decides he's going to assume the role now of accuser and liar. And that's really what he does, right? The Bible talks about him being the accuser, that he goes through the courtroom of heaven accusing us of all kinds of things. That he's a liar, that he can't do anything to lie. About. So if he can't get us one way, he's going to try another. And when he sees he can't tempt Joseph sexually, he assumes his role of liar Potiphar's wife immediately shifts to damage control and calls all the other men of the house to her. Most of them probably she had relationships with too. I'm assuming. I hate to be trash her. I don't put that on Facebook. That's gossip. I don't know that for sure. But it's what, did she do? what she did do was demean Joseph. This Hebrew, did you hear that? Called the race car. This Hebrew that you had in here, which is probably why she was attracted to him, People are going to be attracted to your gifts. They're going to be attracted to your favor. Beware. This Hebrew. 
thievery that you brought went to make sport of us. Make no mistake, if Satan starts accusing, he's going to start naming calling too. Those fiery darts will get in our hearts if we don't have our shield of faith up. We're not sure what God thinks of us. We're going to believe what everybody else tries to convince us about ourselves. She doesn't stop there. She blatantly just lays there until our master comes home with a coat in her hand saying, you did this to us. Did you hear the shift that she had? It's your fault. You had it in here. You brought it in here. This Hebrew, you put him in charge of all this stuff. And now look what's happened. Potiphar gets angry. Whether he was angry at her or angry at Joseph, who knows. But he was angry. And the accusing and the accusations caused him to put him in prison. This Hebrew you're so proud of that you love so much that you brought into this house and put charge of everything. Tried to have his way with him. Potiphar's anger puts him in prison. Joseph is without wearing orange prison clothes. I'm kidding. I'm just making sure you're paying attention. Are you paying attention? Why? Because his dedication to God is greater than his dedication to himself or his status. The first coat was taken from him. It was ripped off by his brothers. But the second one, he freely gave up. Think about it. The first one, they just took it. But the temptation of the hate of his brothers and that weapon nothing compared to what's about to come through Potiphar's life. Because it's one thing to be the victim, it's another thing to be the victor by never swinging a blow. To have the victory in God by getting on your knees. Because why? We don't fight against flesh and blood. It's not Potiphar's wife. It's that spirit of lust that's running around. That's trying to make it look like love when it's not. And so when we get a hold of those things, we've got to give up Wait a minute now, I'm fixing to have to give up what little good I have out of this menial life that I've stretched out. I, God, I feel like God's against me already. I feel like He's causing me to do things He wouldn't ask anybody else to do. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Please don't say amen, but I'm just asking. And now He wants me to give up that too? Really? No, I don't think so. And we said it for counterfeit this. Joseph runs from him. He leaves the coat and says, that's fine. That's all right. I'll go to prison. Whatever I need to do. Man, would I be screaming at the top of the lungs? I'm innocent. Probably would have said some names to her I shouldn't have said. I would have been so upset. The devil is dedicated to destroy us. And we sometimes are dedicated to destroying ourselves. But if we dedicate ourselves to the Lord, God will help us. But look, as much as the enemy is dedicated to taking our fruit, God is even more dedicated to causing whatever he brings against us to make fruit. Think about how mad that makes him. Think about how mad he makes. He tells me, I was praying one time, he says, I love to make the devil look foolish. Isn't that cool? That he likes to let him just get out here and do what he thinks he's doing something. He's doing this, doing that. And all of a sudden, if we stay with him, he's going to flip it on him. Right at the last minute. And he's going to make him so mad. And man, does he show up when he gets flipped like this. He cuts up, tries to create a distraction, a problem. But let me tell you something. God is dedicated to you. That's why he's wanted us to say, well, I believe God loves me. God loves me. God loves you. He's dedicated to you. And because as much as it might have looked like Satan had gotten his way, it was God's plan all along. And the next step in Joseph's destiny is accomplished by placing him where he wants it to be. Be exactly in prison. And I know that that change is not the change that we had hoped for. That that deliverance was not the deliverance that he had hoped for. But it is exactly what God needed him to do. Because he actually advanced in prison to get to his real destiny. It wasn't what Joseph wanted. It would have been what I would have wanted. But at the end of the day, and we'll get into this much more next week, isn't it about trusting him? Through everything in this life, good, bad, and different. Why we don't understand certain things. Why things happen. Bad things happen to good people. And the wicked seem to prosper. From David's Psalms up to now, we have all these questions. But the underlying thing is, do we really trust God? Where is our faith in this? Nonetheless, if I stay a hold of Him, fruit is produced regardless of what Satan can do. And the destiny is not only for Joseph, but of all God's children. He's going to save them through his life. 
Joseph loved the Lord. Joseph was faithful to him. His heart was full of goodness. And he was full of self-control. Did you hear those four fruits of the Spirit? He was faithful. He was full of goodness and self-control. And also, he loved the Lord. And now, God's about to produce in him patience. The one that we've heard Tabo, don't pray for it, don't pray for it, it'll be bad. Don't pray for it, it'll be bad. Right? Isn't that what we said? Don't pray for patience. He wants you to have it. He's going to give it to you anyway. So just pray for his will. But in the midst of all of it, he's so dedicated to seeing his dreams become reality. So in closing today, as the praise team comes, he's dedicated to seeing our dreams become reality. Everybody in this house today. The hindrances of sin, habits will always keep us from it and ruin our crops. So if you're facing temptation today, God is going to provide you a way out. If you'll just get with Him today, He's going to find you a way out of what's happening. Also, if you're falling into temptation and you feel like you're bound up by slavery today of sin, you're bound up in a sin habit, you're bound up in a lifestyle, you're bound up in an addiction, you're bound up in relationships, whatever those things are, God has a way of seeing you through every part of those. He's going to make you stronger. He's going to give you the peace and grace that you need. He is here to forgive you. Even if you feel there's no way out, I assure you there's a way out. You may not physically get out of it, but spiritually you're going to get out of it. God is here to make a way for us. And for others, it's time that we get back on course. We resume pursuing our destination. So would you bow your heads with me today? It's time that we realize that the dreams He placed in our hearts will come to reality what we've sung. It's going to come to pass. Lord, let it be done. It may not look like it right now, but if we stay pursuing the Lord, His plan will be accomplished in our lives. He's dedicated to doing so. Let's dedicate ourselves to Him today. To His will and to His way. He's faithful and He wants to make us fruitful. It's our destiny to be fruitful. Let's lay us in the side the sins that so easily beset us Trust the Lord with all our hearts. So the harvest can be reaped and we can live a colorful life. So today as they sing, if you need to just come to the altar and pray, the sides are open. The one's going to come and pray with you there. That'll be the place where you can just be on your own and by yourself. Some time to pray with the Lord as we worship for those that just want to worship today. Just ask the Lord to renew their spirits and then I'm here in the middle to lead you into a relationship with the Lord if you're not sure what that means or you can message me on Facebook through our church app there just go up and says send a message we'll get some information to you I want everyone to know without a shadow of a doubt that they belong to the Lord before they leave this house today and I believe everyone in this house can be free if they just step into the freedom that's already here so let's pray let's worship and let's see depending on what God's leading you to do
Fear is a faith killer. Fear is a faith killer. Doubt is just dressed up fear. Worry is just dressed up fear. It's all fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, and love, and a sound mind. So those things you're worried about today, those things you're doubting, those things you're anxious about, just lay them right here in this week before we leave. I know we've been singing a while, but let's just make sure that we leave them here before we leave. Let's quiet the voices of every, every spirit, every person, but God. And let God right now speak into your life. Let him speak life when there's death. Let him speak strength when there's weakness. Let him speak healing when there's brokenness. Let him speak, 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 sorry, fruitfulness where there is barrenness. And allow his spirit to overcome anything and everything that is in your life right now. In Jesus' name.
baskets slap full of fruit unhealthy. And they, those that are around can see that fruit. Partake of it and know that the Lord is good. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you.